Hola, I'm Christian, and this is 10 Reasons You Shouldn't Buy the Canon R10. Now, can some of these reasons be overcome, and is it still worth purchasing? Stick around to the end for my thoughts. Now, let's have a look at some of the reasons why I think you shouldn't buy the Canon R10. Number one, the battery. Canon used the LPE17 batteries in the Canon R10. They use this because it's small, compact and light, so it keeps the weight down of the camera. Now, although this is a good battery for the device, they don't last the longest. I recently used these and the camera on a trip to Prague, and after recording some short talking head stuff and some footage of travel, the battery went from full to dead very quickly, which as you can imagine is very frustrating. So if you do look at an R10, do make sure you purchase a few extra of these or maybe a battery grip. Number two, no top screen LCD. You have all your dials on this side. Now, although it doesn't sound like much, the top screens that Canon add on their devices are actually really low power usage. To find out your settings or to find out what you need to change, you either have to pull the camera to your eye or open the flip screen. Now, using the flip screen is traditionally the easiest way but it uses considerably more battery life than an lcd top screen so for me that is a massive downside to the r10 compared to some of the other cameras at the same price point within canon's own range number three if you want to see your information while using the lcd screen on the r10 there is an overwhelming amount of information on the screen at once, and it gives you a very little area to view what you are recording through. This can be quite distracting. You can overcome this by setting your settings and cycling through the information button to get rid of these, but it would just be better if they had a top LCD and took some of the stuff away from the screen so it wasn't as distracting. Number four. The Canon R10 starts at $899 or £999. Now, although this doesn't sound expensive, for the same money you can pick up a good condition used Canon EOS R that yes, also has cropped 4K, like an APS-C R10, but it is a full frame camera. Yes, this has some features that the R doesn't, and the R has some features this doesn't but I personally would prefer the full frame variant with a top screen and some slightly more features than this for the same money. So if you are considering an R10, do look at a used Canon EOS R as well. Number five, the R10 has no Canon log. Now, like I said in the previous reason, you can pick up a Canon EOS R for the same sort of money that has Canon log. If video is a big thing for you, this doesn't have log. It's slightly bigger brother, the Canon R7, which is a little bit more expensive, does come with log. So for a little bit more money or used for the same sort of money, you can actually pick a camera up that has log as well, which will allow you to also connect to external recorders and record 10-bit 422 as well. This will do 10-bit 422 via an external recorder, but not in Canon log. Now, if you are enjoying this video, please do like and subscribe because it allows me to make more content like this. Now, I've also done a video called 10 Reasons Why You Should Buy the Canon R10, and that is just here. So for more information and you are interested in the Canon R10, do check that out. Number six, this is both a blessing and a con. The R10 comes with 4K 60 frames per second which is a really good feature, but it does crop the already cropped APS-C sensor. So at a 1.6 times crop, the sensor in this is a crop sensor. That's a lot of crops, right? Small sensor. But when you go to 60 frames per second at 4K, it makes this sensor even smaller, turning it into a micro four thirds. So those lenses that you've got, the focal range becomes different yet again. That's not ideal. 
but you can record in 1080p 60 frames per second. So there is a workaround, it's just not 4K. Number seven, there's no headphone output, which I think for a camera released in 2022, this is a really simple ad. It's not overly expensive and there potentially is space to add a headphone output and it would have allowed you to monitor audio from this and it would have made it a little bit more versatile. Like I said, Canon ESR used at the same sort of money does get a headphone output. So I think that's a slight oversight on Canon's part and it would have been a really simple ad. Number eight, in 2022, there are a range of cameras under a thousand pounds that now have in-body image stabilization or IBIS. They come from a range of different brands like Fuji and Olympus, but Canon haven't considered it in their entry level mirrorless camera. Now I think this is a slight oversight because going forward, we're gonna see more and more cameras with in-body image stabilization. And I think Canon could have beaten their biggest competitor to this in this price range. They just chose not to. You can look at a Canon R7, which is a little bit more money, that has it built in. So I think for the money, they missed out with this one and they should have had added in body image stabilization. Number nine, the RFS lens selection for this camera isn't particularly great at the moment. You can pair it with an EF adapter to EF lenses and you can pair it with current RF glass. But when you're spending a thousand pounds on a camera, to then spend double the amount of money on a decent lens for it seems a little bit redundant. There isn't any particularly great RFS lens glass at the moment. So the infrastructure for an RFS isn't quite there. The RF lens glass is definitely worth buying. And if you can afford the money to purchase it, I would recommend it because it will last you as you progress and get better. But if you're starting out and you're buying the R10 as a budget camera or an upgrade into mirrorless, there isn't a lot of selection for this size sensor. Number 10, I'm not quite sure where the R10 sits yet. Now, if you're looking to upgrade from a budget Canon camera and you have glass and you don't mind using the adapter, I see the value of it. The image quality is exceptional. It's easy to use. The features that I've mentioned in other videos really do make this a good purchase. But as a camera on its own, I'm not quite sure. The fact that the infrastructure for the RFS lenses aren't quite there yet doesn't make it the ideal camera to buy and start with the Canon infrastructure at this. The kit lenses, there's only a few at the moment. Are they worth buying? Not really. But if you are looking for a camera to buy and you just want a kit lens and you just want to take photographs or make basic videos and keep things simple, this is 100% worth it. Will I still use this? Yeah, I will. Because actually I really like it and it's a really good camera. But I have lenses I can put on it and will I use it as my main camera? No, I won't. I'll use it as a B camera. So if I'm going to record videos where I need my are for other things, this can take its place. If I want multiple shots, this is really good to add into the mix. But as a camera on its own, the infrastructure for the RFS system just isn't quite there yet, but it will be. And when it is, it's gonna be exceptionally good value. That's it, I hope you've enjoyed this content. Do like and subscribe, like and subscribe so I can make more content like this. And if you've got any comments, got any questions about the features that we've spoken about, leave them in the comments. And if I can make a video on them, I will. I'm Christian, I've enjoyed making this, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I will see you soon for more content. Stay lucky.